we're asked to find the limits of the given vectored valued functions. To determine the limit of a vectored valued function, we determine the limit of each component. And because the given vectored valued functions have an x, y, and z component, we need to determine three limits to determine the limit of each vectored valued function. To save some time, I've already set this up. Here we have the limit of the x, y, and z components as t approaches seven. For this first limit, we have the limit of a quadratic function as t approaches seven. A quadratic function is always continuous, and therefore we can determine the limit by performing direct substitution. And therefore the limit is equal to negative two times the square of seven plus two times seven minus four. The square of seven times negative two is negative 98. We have negative 98 plus 14 minus four, which equals negative 88. Next we have the limit of a rational function as t approaches seven. And notice how we have division by zero when t is equal to seven, which means we cannot perform direct substitution with the function in this form. But let's see if we can factor and simplify this rational function. Factoring the numerator, we would have two binomial factors. Because the first term is t squared, we have t and t in the first positions. And then we want the factors of negative 63 to add to positive two, which are positive nine and negative seven. So this does factor nicely, and notice now in this form, we have a common factor of t minus seven between the numerator and denominator, which graphically means the graph has a hole at t equals seven, which does not affect the limit, and therefore we can simplify this out and determine the limit of t plus nine as t approaches seven. And now we can perform direct substitution. Seven plus nine is equal to 16. And now for the last limit, we have the limit of four cosine t as t approaches seven. The function of four cosine t is always continuous. We can determine this limit by performing direct substitution, which gives us four cosine seven, which is approximately 3.0156. And now we know the limit is equal to the vector with an x component of negative 88, a y component of 16, and a z component of four cosine seven. Looking at the next limit, notice how the vectored value function is written using the unit vectors i, j, and k, but the first step is still to determine the limits of each component. For the first limit, we have a limit of a quadratic function as t approaches zero, Quadratic functions are always continuous, and therefore we can determine the limit by performing direct substitution. If we substitute zero for t, we have the quantity zero plus five squared, which is equal to five squared, which equals 25. Next, we have the limit of e raised to the power of eight t as t approaches zero. The exponential function is always continuous. We can determine the limit by performing direct substitution, and therefore we have e raised to the power of eight times zero, which is equal to e to the zero, which equals one. And finally, we have the limit of a rational function as t approaches zero. But notice how the rational function is only undefined when t is equal to five, and we're approaching a t value of zero because the function is continuous from both sides around t equals zero. We can determine the limit by performing direct substitution, which gives us eight divided by the quantity zero minus five, which is equal to eight fifths. And therefore the limit of the vector value function is equal to the vector 25i plus one j, or just plus j, and then minus eight fifths k. If the vector function is given using i, j, and k, we should also give the vector using the unit vectors i, j, and k. I hope you found this helpful.